Right then, this is a video for a seventh generation Honda Accord and it's kind of test review and also opinion basically and you know feedback on the car. Um, as you probably know if you've seen our videos before most of our videos are actually to do with um, just going through various functions of the car, feeding back any issues that might be or might not be on the car um, for prospective buyers to you know possibly make the trip to us. This is nothing to do with that. This is slightly self-indulgent. This is about cars I love. Um, and the seventh generation Accord is a car I, I am particularly fond of. I just, I've always felt it's one that Honda really hit the sweet spot with. Um, this particular example, it could be any by the way, this is a petrol, automatic two litre Type S. It's only done 40,000 miles, so it's, you know, it's quite a rare example in this day and age. And it's a 2006 model car because they revised the model in 2005, 2006. So this is the later type. Um, what I love about the cars, I mean, mechanically, whether it be petrol or diesel, but particularly petrol in my uh, opinion, um, the engines, this K-series two liter engine and the 2.4 um, are just wonderful pieces of engineering because most engines this day and age are pretty good. Um, some are reliable, some aren't, some last the test of the time, some don't. The Honda's kind of got everything with these engines. They are lovely to use day in, day out. They're very efficient. Um, they pull beautifully. They're very economical. They're ridiculously reliable uh, and long lasting. Just regular maintenance on the car and the cars last a huge amount of time. Um, we've seen them with well over 200,000 miles, 300,000 miles, still sounding sweet and still pulling strong and having had, suffered no major issues. Uh, but that is fairly typical of Honda and the way they manufacture their engines. They are, they are superb in that respect. And it's not to say that there aren't examples where engines have had problems or people have had problems. Of course there are. I'm looking at the broader picture of you know how many people have had issues, serious issues with them, and by comparison with virtually any other manufacturer, um, they are, were and are light years ahead. But as I said, it's it's what I love about the engines is, although it's four cylinder, it sounds like a four cylinder. You don't get the tingling, the vibrations back through the car. They're beautifully balanced engines. Um, just fantastic absolutely fantastic uh, they're also very well isolated from you in, in the car um, they don't get rowdy particularly only at the higher revs but even then the engine notes so nice and crisp you, you kind of forgive it really um, gearboxes manuals on the seventh generation are, are brilliant this one happens to be an automatic which is a very nice box for the uh, type of car it is Gear shifts are really nicely um, judged in terms of the ratios and also the quality of um, gear change. Um, looking around inside the car, it's of its age, but I think it's brilliant for that. I mean, first things first, I mean, this is a 15 year old car that isn't a squeak or a rattle from the interior at all. They are beautifully put together. And as I say in many of my videos, it is to my eternal frustration that I find and read the same rubbish spouted by car magazines which seem to think that a door that sounds heavy and funky and squidgy plastics makes for a well-built car. No, it looks well-built, and sometimes they are quite well-built, but it also it gives a, it's an impression. It's how well the cars are bolted together, not necessarily how they, um, how they last the test of time. I've been in so many so-called premium cars um, which have were lauded for their build quality. After five years, they're rattling and creaking and things have fallen off them, the paint's peeling off the, um, the switch gear. Some of the switches work, some of them don't. Um, these, you know, they, they last hundreds of thousands of miles and tend to still feel the same. You can abuse them, they can look shoddy, but that's about ownership, not necessarily the quality of the interiors. But they are really nicely done. It's also just a lovely, easy to use dashboard. Um, the sat navs, antiquated of course, still works very nicely. Um, it's a DVD disc based system, so it, you know, it is quite old fashioned. 
um, but it works. It was probably a weak point for them. Disc error warnings were quite common on them because basically the discs been bounced up and down on the road, so the little readers uh, sometimes uh, mess up. Um, but actually quite cheap to fix, two or three hundred pounds these days to get a a, a unit reconditioned. Uh, but this one works perfectly. Air conditioning, really lovely and cold. Um, the even on this model you had dual zones to get of different temperatures side to side. The dash binnacle in front, typical Honda, simple, easy, legible dials um, to take in the information. And again, they just, they just give you the information you need, not, no more, no less. Um, a steering wheel, it feels great in hand. It's slight, it's sort of thinner rimmed than some of these big chunky things, but I actually quite like it. You can really feel the road when you're at the, at, at the extremes. Um, but just a lovely place to sit and drive and operate a car for for you know years of ownership and that is fairly typical of the Accords they tend to keep same owner it tends to keep them for quite a long time you you rarely see lots and lots of owners on Accords um, people that buy them tend to sort of want to hold on to the things and it's easy to see why it's just such a lovely lovely car um, but I leave the best to last because in my opinion the chassis and steering on this car is one of the sweetest and nicest Honda ever, ever produced. You've got a power steering system which is hydraulic, it's not electric. Um, it, you actually get feel on the road. Um, it is beautifully weighted. It's not so quick to make the car nervous. It's not so slow that it makes it feel slovenly. And this section of road is superb for showing what a car is capable of doing, how it controls itself, how it controls the body motions through the corners. Um, it's just a beautiful car to go along slowly in or to flow through nasty, bumpy, yumpy off camber corners as this section of road is. And it is, it puts to shame so many modern cars through there because what it does, it does it without any harshness. It is so controlled so supple so sophisticated in its body motions it makes modern cars feel so crashy and uncouth by comparison and you wonder where the progress really is in some cars because you know i've driven cars again so-called um you know with great and the good of the sort of the modern chassis world and along this road they just seem to fall apart uh, I was lucky when I was at Honda, I used to work at the main dealer, I got to do a couple of track days in these cars when they were pitched them against at the time, I think it was a sporty Volvo, the BMW, the Audi, um, Mercedes and Mondeo actually on the track uh, and it was on a proper racetrack. They were completely bog standard cars, no modifications, nothing and it showed you how beautifully balanced this chassis was um, and how accessible and how easy to read the chassis was when you're at your limit now it worked all four tires to the corner you could go through with a glide and a, a, a complete one motion with the car other cars which you know again hailed as fantastic by the motor magazines on the on the open road just literally fell apart on the track they just suddenly floated and lolloped about um, the notable exception actually was the Mondeo at the time um, I think they had an ST24 which I, I still rate as a really lovely car great chassis um, but the chassis tend to kind of fall apart they tend to be creaking and knocky over um, over the miles but at the time uh, you know it was alongside the Accord I think in in how it paved on track um, even the 3 Series which you know everyone sort of loves um, it, it perhaps it wasn't a sporty enough model but it just felt uh, yeah, you couldn't access the chassis a, a you didn't have the power to do it with the model they chose even though it was i think it was a 325 um but it just it just had a sort of a porpoising lolloping action through the corners the core just digs into its tires but feeds back everything through the seat of your pants through the steering and it's all the more remarkable because this is basically a family saloon and Honda don't get the credit they deserve um, sometimes for you know what they do with their cars and what they're actually capable of doing um, because they always go for a slightly firmer setup 
than other manufacturers they'll forego a little bit of ride comfort so bumps like these although it absorbs them beautifully again by modern standards was slightly firmer than other cars at the time so people used to say they had a sort of a slightly jittery unsettled ride um, but what it gave you at the other end of the scale was beyond comparison um, and that's why I love this generation it's so simple so honest um, so beautifully engineered um, maybe too expensive for them to engineer in this day and age I don't know you know everything's done by computer and um, you know they've just chucked things into the computer and they, they know how things are going to work out but it doesn't always work out like that and yet the Accord was it seems to me was built by enthusiasts that's how it feels when you drive the car because day in day out it's, a, it's just a wonderful machine um, things I don't like they are probably few and far between and I'm going to struggle really I think all Hondas of most generations have always suffered actually from probably a bit more road noise than other cars and it's something they could easily have engineered out um, with a bit more sound deadening under the arches and under the um, body um, floor pan um, so that would be a, a criticism but that and it's, it's a genuine one um, the likewise sort of noise at motorway speed it's probably a bit noisier well it is it's, it's definitely noisier than things like a IS250 or a C-Class or a 3 Series they are definitely more um, cosseting at, at, at motorway speed so you tend to get a bit more wind noise plus the road noise different mo different surfaces on the motorways tend to show themselves up very clearly on the Accords um, but it's not to say they're loud or, you know you know by comparison to other cars of their type um, the Passats, the um, uh, sort of Mondeos and the Vectras of this world, um, you know, they were as quiet as those, but just not as quiet as the, 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 the elite, if you like. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that sort of realistically, there's not really, there's nothing, I just, I, I, I genuinely love, love the cars. Um, you know, some of the switch gears sort of hidden away a little bit, I guess some things aren't so intuitive I don't like the fact that on these air conditioning systems the air conditioning is built into the screen because obviously if you have a problem with the screen it means you can't use the air conditioning system um, but that's happened probably once on one car in probably many thousands we've sold so it you know I'm really am nitpicking with it um, but overall I mean it is a wonderful wonderful piece of machinery um, that fortunately because I think it's kind of added to, added to its appeal that most people went for the obvious candidates they chased badge they chased image above what was probably the, the best all-rounder and by best all-rounder I mean it's top of the tree when it came to chassis dynamics steering it's miles ahead of anyone else in terms of absolute reliability over hundreds of thousands of miles um, by comparison certainly but it's right up there in other regards it is a nice refined car but it's not the most refined it's very comfortable but it's not the most comfortable ride um, but as I said as an overall package of ownership and enjoyment I, uh, I simply can't think of many better cars in, 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 in that sort of falls into my mind um, as I said, the video is literally just, for me, it is self-indulgent. I love this seventh generation car, and that's why I've done the video. And it's something I'll probably look back on and look at the video in years to come. Because I want to kind of keep memories of these things. Um, and if it's been any use to anybody or you've got any enjoyment out of it, then that's absolutely fine.